term auction credit, we'll leave that alone for a second, and just other loans that are outstanding. These are new programs, all of these various companies, and LLC is a limited liability company, and they're all administered out of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, um, and they form these various companies. The first one, the well, let's go down here for a second, the Maiden Lane LLC, this was to, uh, this is to facilitate the purchase of Bear Stearns by J.P. Morgan Chase. This uh, is AIG paper, Maiden Lane 2, and Maiden Lane 3 is also AIG paper. So you can see there's still $20 billion of, uh, you know, money owed to the Fed by AIG. Let's see. And so that allowed the Fed, here's the important part, when the Fed purchased all of this stuff, well, we'll talk about that in a second. And then right up here is a commercial paper funding facility. And that is just, that has been a way for the Fed to get uh, commercial paper, private debt, like this check, out into the economy. Because this check spends, I mean, you could, you can exchange this, this is a negotiable instrument. And our corporations have treated things like this as money amongst themselves, corporate debt and et cetera, and have traded it. And now, you know, they're unable to make good on their promises. And that's a lot of what's driving this. Okay. So the important thing to realize about this, let's look over it again really quickly. But these are the various assets, the various, various promises that have been made to the 12 different Federal Reserve Banks. Now, if you look down here, their balance sheet has gotten significantly larger in the last, obviously, uh, year or so. And right now, they're sitting on $2 trillion of assets. Uh, more than half of that, a little more than half of that, is still in New York City, in the New York Federal Reserve Bank. And so you're able to see um, just how much of the nation's wealth this system concentrates in New York City. That's something we should maybe talk more about in the future as well. There's one other I really wanted to talk about, and that's this central bank liquidity swaps. And that has been a way for the Fed to get dollars out into the global economy, out into other nations' central banks. They exchange their currency, euro, yen, yuan, whatever it might be, in exchange for these. Because then they, those various other central banks, can loan dollars to their banks. Why would they want to do that? Um, the entire world is getting rid of these right now. Nobody wants these anymore. And that's why you saw, you know, the special drawing rights. You know, they're, they're thinking about that, maybe being a new global currency. But something else will have to emerge um, in order to facilitate global trade. And this has entered long-term decline. And so they're settling their debts right now. That's what everybody wants them in order to settle debts and kind of like square up before, you know, it's time to move on to something else. Okay, these are all the assets. Now, the thing about this is when they purchase, when you see this balance sheet that's so high, $2 trillion, well, the Federal Reserve issues really one liability against those. Whenever it buys anything, you'll see that its balance sheet has to balance perfectly. So whenever it buys these assets, it exchanges them for Federal Reserve notes, inserting money into the economy. Yeah, inserting Federal Reserve notes, to say the least, into the economy. And so we take a look at um, what this part of the balance sheet and we see a couple things here. Um, all of these are basically going to be FRNs, Federal Reserve Notes, but they're just held in different ways. Um, this is the important one right here that I really want to talk about, deposits, which as you can see make up about half of their liabilities. When you take money to a bank, if you take money to a bank and you deposit $1,000, that becomes a liability to that bank you put the money in there, they're immediately going to go, you know, they have the right by our law right now to loan that money out and to loan out much more than that, as a matter of fact. Um, and so they now owe you 
they owe you whatever it was you deposited. So your money in the bank is a liability for the bank. Um, and these are a liability for one bank. Well, for 12. For the 12 banks of the Federal Reserve System. Uh, let's see. So these are deposits that it actually holds of its generally, you can see of its various member banks. So Chase Manhattan, uh, what used to be, you know, WAMU used to be a member bank of the Federal Reserve. Every FDIC insured bank can deposit some of its money, can, is supposed to deposit, you know, some money here at the Federal Reserve banks. The Treasury also has some money at the Fed. Um, and then these are outstanding notes. These are notes that uh, the banks are required to keep, you know, in order to satisfy their reserve requirements, but they're not being held at a Federal Reserve Bank right now. They're probably being held at another member bank. Um, and then they square it all off. They fell a little short, so their own capital contributions bring them up to the exact same amount. They have to balance their books. Two trillion, sixty-four billion, four hundred and thirty-one million dollars. So, and if you also look through, you'll see that each of these various banks balances their books. Okay. So, what's what's the importance of this? Well, I guess what I, there, there's really one thing I want you to take away from this. That this represents a promise by the Federal Reserve Banks. So if these stop working, you'll know where to look. These represent a promise by the government, which should be... How different do these feel to you? So how closely aligned is our government at this point with these private banks, these 12 private banks? And uh, we'll talk more about that in an upcoming presentation. Thank you.